Well, hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. Uh, my name is Mike DiNapoli. I'm joined here by Mason Alford. Uh, he's part of our SSBCI team. I've got Tina Grill also here at Controls. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I look forward to having a, an open conversation. Uh, this is our second webinar that we've done. We're going to talk about SSBCI today, uh, something that is very, very important to the state of Florida, very important to the to the small business of the state of Florida. And I hope you all join in, ask some great questions. Uh, we're going to have a few slides that we're going to start showing. But before we do that, I'd like to just uh, a few housekeeping items. We're going to leave everybody's mic open, but uh, until we get to questions, if you could just make sure that you're all muted. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, I ask that you make them uh, important to the group important for everybody to know the question and answer. Uh, if it's a question particular to your uh, business, particular to your agency company, uh, we're going to have chat open as well. I encourage you to put uh, questions into chat. Tina is going to control that. And if we feel it's important that we share it with the rest of the group, I'll have Tina read the question out to us. We're also, uh, we also have our email address as well. We'll have that posted. Uh, we'll have Tina put that in the chat. We'll have some links put into chat too that we feel that are important for everybody to uh, to reference and to go to. Again, if you have any questions, also um, uh, speak up. Uh, we'll we'll try to get to every question. So I think we should just get right into it. I don't think we've uh, we've got uh, too many more housekeeping items, but I think everybody's joined us. It's about 10:03 right now. So um, again, thank you everybody for joining. This is going to be, I think, an informative slide presentation. We're going to pause a few times during the slide presentation where we think there should be some questions. We'll try and answer all the questions, but we'll uh, we'll pause a few times and, and wait for some questions. So uh, I'm going to sort of tag team with Mason here. We're going to talk about uh, SSBCI 2.0. We're going to talk about some highlights. We're going to go through uh, some treasury updates. We're going to go through our application process. We're going to go through some of the programs that we intend on standing up during the first tranche of uh, funding from treasury. So let's get right to it if we want to start sharing our screen. So last Friday we um, we had a call with Treasury uh, to discuss 2.0. It was an informative call. Uh, it gave us a little bit of highlight of what to expect over the next coming months and how we're going to stand up our program, some of the things that we uh, should know some of the um, application uh, processes that we think that we need to be aware of. Um, so let me just talk about 2.0. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the language here on the slides. Um, I'm not going to talk about every specific uh, specific bullet point on this slide, but I'm going to leave it up there for everybody to sort of read it, understand it, and hopefully develop some questions um, throughout the slide presentation. Um, the state of Florida was allocated $324 million uh, through SSBCI 2.0. Uh, that's under the, the funding uh, mechanism metric that they used. Every state was allocated uh, funding. I believe it was a $10 billion treasury allocation throughout the country, and our, our share was $324 million. There are some other funding sources that might increase that, and I'll we'll talk about that in a few more slides. So an important um, understanding on how this is going to be funded to the state of Florida is in three tranches. 324 million divided by three, um, $108 million available on the first tranche. And to be eligible for the second and then, of course, the third tranche, there's going to be some metrics that we need to hit. Important metric is that 80% of the initial funding needs to be allocated to businesses, needs to be out on the street invested in businesses, loan to businesses, before we can apply for our second tranche of the 180, $108 million. So it's an important understanding to know why we're saying that. We need to meet hurdles. We need to meet certain parameters, certain benchmarks that Treasury is going to put out there for us. We're waiting for more specifics on that. We think it's going to be, we kind of sort of know what it's going to be because of 1.0. Most importantly is the 10 to 1 leverage ratio dollar for dollar loan, um, if we're making loans, um, potential job creation, uh, impact to the economy. There's going to be a few other um, hurdles that we need to meet, uh, but we know that we have the ability to get 
quickly money out on the street on programs, two programs that we currently have active. We're, we're lucky enough to have continued 1.0 to be able to quickly and, and transparently get this money out on the street uh, in order for us to apply for 2.0. So I'm sorry, for the second funding under 2.0. Any other questions? Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, it's important for us to put the first draw and the first allocation into programs that are going to be able to get the money deployed um, not only efficiently and expeditiously and meet all of Treasury guidelines, because if we don't do it uh, within a certain time frame, Treasury can deny Florida access to additional uh, to additional allocations. We had a, a good question come in on the chat, from David Rodriguez. Does the 80% must have been dispersed or include funds encumbered slash committed? No, it has to be on the street. Treasury guidelines uh, are going to be probably more detailed, David. Good question since you're around. Good to hear from you, David. 1.0, there were some questions about deployed, committed. Where is the money? Is it out on the street? Is it sitting in a, an encumbered account? Uh, I think they're going to be more specific about that, how that needs to be deployed. We work with EDA uh, in some of their revolving loan funds, and they're very specific about what it means to have the money on the street. So I believe that it's going to be very detailed that the money needs to be on the street. But we'll wait on Treasury guidelines. You can probably hear us say that a few times throughout the presentation that we're going to wait on Treasury guidelines. We may have an inclination of what it's going to be like, but until we actually see Treasury guidelines that we're, we're, we're assuming um, what it's going to be. So, good question. Next slide. So, additional allocations. This is where it gets a little bit uh, complicated when we talk about allocations. Uh, we have the $324 million that's available to us that we know that has uh, is coming to Florida. Uh, with some stipulations, making sure that we do it uh, efficiently, effectively, that we, we meet all the hurdles. There's additional funding that's coming out for what they call socially and economically disadvantaged. There's technical assistance funding that's coming out uh, in the form of $500 million available for the technical assistance. Uh, socially and economically disadvantaged is $1.5 billion. And then there's an additional $1 billion performance-based allocation. And those are the three bullets that you see there. So you're talking about $3 billion of additional funding that's available nationwide that Treasury is not, has not indicated what that allocation will be. They apparently, they're, it's not the same metric as the 324 allocation. There's a different metric that they're using. They haven't shared that with us and they haven't shared what that allocation to the state of Florida is. We believe it's going to be another substantial sum of money. So this is why I mentioned we, we need to get the money out and hit those hurdles, we need to get the money out in order to tap into the additional funding that's available. So I'll pause there real quick, um, see if there's any other questions. If anybody has raised their hand, anybody has any questions on that or any chat, come in. Yep. Okay. So let me talk about the first disbursement. We, we expect that we'll, we'll see some funding. I know the application period opens on December 11th. We're, we're going to be ready to put our application in as soon as the portal opens. Uh, Treasury has not opened the portal. Our conversation last week with Treasury was they expect guidance to come out in the coming weeks in October, probably mid to late October. And then soon after that, they expect their uh, portal to open. Once that portal opens, we're going to be ready to apply. We know what we want to do with the first tranche of money. We know how to effectively get it out into the street to be able to come back and apply for additional funding. My real goal into, in this conversation, in this Q&A would be, we need help from those on the street. We need help with those who are working with small businesses directly to find out what's needed, to find out what's going to be, what, what, the, what the, the lending environment's gonna look like in 15 months, 12 to 15 months, which is our time frame that we expect to get the money out on the first draw on the street. That's when we, we want to develop our narrative. We want to develop other programs. And you can see on the slide on, on disbursement two from Treasury to the, to the state, the programs that we feel are going to be most important. And that's where we need to hear from you all about what you feel is the most important. But let me back up onto disbursement number one. So 
we have uh, determined that we're going to continue the two programs that we have currently operational here in Florida under SSBCI 1.0. We're going to allocate $88 million to our collateral support program that we currently have operational. Uh, we have uh, allocated, or at least on paper allocated, $20 million for venture capital. Uh, venture capital is a program that is operational here in Florida under 1.0. Uh, we plan on looking at how we're going to operationalize that, how we're going to effectively get that into venture capital space. Now, those of you who are on the call that know venture capital, it's it, it's a very it's a very broad word in how you actually structure those deals. And I don't want to get into the specifics on that, but uh, if you want to know more, send us an email. We're, we're happy to call you offline on, uh, on how what we're thinking. Uh, the second disbursement is between the first and the second disbursement is where we really want to talk to everybody. And I know we have other webinars planned to talk about that on other loan programs or other capital programs, capital support programs, capital access programs that we plan on utilizing uh, in disbursement number two. So again, in disbursement number two, that 80% has to be allocated before we can apply for disbursement number three. If you wanted to add another Yeah, I just wanted to add a few points to that. Um, in our, um, Mike mentioned the application to Treasury, and that's an important piece to this because we have to demonstrate or tell Treasury how we plan on utilizing the full um, allocation of $324 million. And um, we, we have to um, do it in such a way that um, it's, it's open enough and it's uh, specific enough, it's open and specific enough for Florida to reach the industries and regions and specific populations that are needed to, to make sure that these programs run well. So uh, you, you see there's venture capital, collateral support. There's a few other programs that will give you a high level overview of, but it's the intent of this webinar, if you're not familiar with, is to familiarize yourself with the terminology of SSPCI. So you can help us uh, design these programs. So they, they can maximize you know, their effectiveness. Any questions, Tina, on that? Any chat? Any, does anybody have any questions on that? If you do have a question that you feel is going to be useful to the entire group, please speak up. Raise your hand. Uh, David Rodriguez has another question. Is collateral support program the same as the bridge loan for 504 loans? In this, yes. Another question. Next slide. So let's get into um, the capital access. So I'll let you start talking about some of this here. You're familiar with this. Sure. So the capital act. So the way that U.S. Treasury classifies SSBCI programs are under two categories. So capital access program is one of them, and it op operates a little bit differently than some of the other ones you'll see. But it essentially acts as a full loan insurance program between a lender and DEO. So the way it occurs is a lender and a borrower will, uh, you know, a small business would come into a bank. They need a line of credit or some sort of working capital or really any business purpose is eligible under cap. But the lender and borrower would decide that they, um, uh, the loan is appropriate for this program. The lender and the borrower contribute a percentage of that loan into a reserve fund and DEO would match that contribution with a with SSBCI funds. And this is important because um, it, it reduces the risk of the overall portfolio of the lenders loans and rolling cap. So if you go to the next slide, Tina. So this is, you know, this illustrates the way a cap program works, the lender and DEO would enter into a master agreement. So any loan enrolled in the program would uh, meet specific eligibility criteria and it would be a very simple process. The lender and the borrower are the ones who negotiate the term. It's typically, or the percentage rather, it's typically between two and 7% of the, the loan and DEO would match that contribution. So some of these programs that we're, we're highlighting are the programs that were available under 1.0. They are the same programs that were available under 2.0. Uh, that would have a, a, in order to change that or alter that, you need a, a new legislation. So this 
2.0 is just a reauthorization of 1.0. So I just want to, we're highlighting some programs here that were available previously, which we're told are going to be available. Uh, there might be more guidelines around it, but again, the same programs are available. So next slide, Tanner. So here's some of the key points on capital access. If you just want to take a gander at these and, and, and go through them, uh, there's a lot there's a lot here and there's a lot that I don't want to I don't want to get into the details on every one of these. Um, we're going to operationalize this between one first draw and second draw. Again, this is where we need some input from those who are dealing with the small businesses. Small businesses are vital to the state of Florida. This is real money. You're talking $324 million plus. And, you know, we, I've had folks tell me that you know, expect twice that uh, if other states don't take their full draw. Money is going to go back into the pool for Treasury to allocate to other states. So there's a lot that could happen between first draw and second draw. I'll pause there and see if there are any questions. I think I hear somebody who wants to ask a question. No? OK. So let's let's go into some of the SSBCI loan facilities. Uh, as Mace had mentioned, uh, up here we've got listed loan participation, loan guarantee program, and collateral support. Again, Treasury guidelines. I encourage everybody to go back and read the legislation that came out uh, under the American Rescue Plan funding. Easy to find if you just type in SSBCI. It's very intuitive. You can go down. Uh, there's a few pages that outline SSBCI. Uh, and then also go to the SSBCI website and find a uh, treasure website. Uh, sign up for updates. Look at their most recent guidelines that came out back on September 27th, I believe it was, that um, didn't talk too much about the actual details of their guidance, but gave some insight. Uh, if you read between the lines, gave some insight as to what they might be focusing on. So that's probably more for us on developing our application, but also good for everybody to know what exactly they're they're interested in. So uh, they're going to go through the applications. I'm sure when they get them, they're going to review them, and hopefully they tell us that they're going to review them on a rolling basis. So the sooner we get ours in, the sooner we can get approved. Someone requested the website address. I just listed several website addresses um, in the chat that you can um, access those resources through. Great, thanks, Tina. Excellent. So this is pretty straightforward too. Loan facilities, where there's DEO, there's a lender, and there's a borrower. Um, you know, pretty basic. Some key points here, um, benefits to the small business. That's gonna be, to me, that's the most important thing, benefiting the small business. What are the, uh, what are the, the details? What are the parameters that lenders are going to be looking for in order to help as many small businesses as possible? Whether it be risk, reducing the risk, uh, increasing your lending volume, uh, whether this is a somewhat targeted population, funding for targeted population, the socially, economically disadvantaged individuals, I encourage you to go look at SBA's definition of that. I'm understanding from Treasury that they're going to utilize that definition for socially and economically disadvantaged. So I encourage you, those who are in those markets, to look at that. Um, again, the, people use the word, the, you know, the gap in financing. There's a lot of money on the street. We recognize that. There's been a lot of money between P3, you know, deal loans, SBA is at a, a record year. I believe they actually ran out of funding for the last few weeks of the year. They needed reauthorization of funding on their uh, the, the larger, I think, 7A, 8A loan. So uh, there is there is lending going on. But my question is, what's going to go on over the next couple of years, a couple of, you know, year and a half, when we develop these portfolios? We don't want to just stand up a program that doesn't get utilized. We want to have programs that are going to be useful. Uh, this is a great win for small businesses, a great win for Florida. So we want to find ways to increase lending and how best to do it without overcomplicating it. So any other comments? Yeah, I just wanted to make the point that, you know, SSBCI programs and funds are not the, the capital market, right? They supplement um, the, the market by design that we have to leverage these funds 10 to 1, right? So we need to identify areas out there right specific lending gaps or issues that you know why are these small businesses or these types of small businesses not getting the access to capital that they need that's a good point that reminds me i've had a lot of conversations one-on-one -on -one, uh, with individuals asking some questions certain banks asking questions i'm trying to go to as many conferences as i can to talk about this program uh, this is again a supplemental program 
it, it, we hear that you know this is a great program that everybody wants to utilize it um, because of course it, it reduces risk it does some of the primary things that a lot of lenders are concerned about in this mix in, in this market in this in this environment but the fact that it's a good program or looks like it's a good program for your portfolio doesn't necessarily mean it's a good program that we should be standing up and i say that because we have to meet certain parameters we have to meet certain goals and it might sound great for your borrower for your market but if it doesn't also add to what we need to provide to treasury the 10 to 1 leverage the job creation and any other hurdles that we need to meet it's not good for the bigger picture and it's not good for for florida if we don't get access to those dollars that are that are available to us so I encourage you when you are asking about funding or asking how we can stand this up or how you can utilize this funding, please ask yourself the question, does this meet those parameters that Treasury is asking for? Uh, leverage is going to be probably the biggest one. Socially and economically disadvantaged targeting, that's going to be a big one. Job creation, I'm sure, is going to be a big one as well. So please ask yourself those questions. Uh, and if it doesn't, think about it and how we can actually utilize this money for what you're thinking to get those targets hit. Next slide. So let's go into um, next slide. Next slide. So venture capital is the second program that we currently have stood up under 1.0. Still operational, still works. Um, there is a lot of venture capital money out there. I just read the other day that there are a record number of funds closing to new money because there's so much money chasing so few um, uh, investments. That worries me. Uh, this is not, you know, the, the fund of last resort for venture capital in any program. It's not to be used as last resort. It's used to help supplement. It's used to help small businesses, either a startup looking to grow, um, looking to to um, to increase their activity, whether it be in in the US or even overseas with um, uh, export financing, which is also something that uh, we're, we're looking into. So venture capital is a very wide, uh, a wide investment, a very, very broad term for, for investing. Uh, we wanna set this up correctly. We wanna know what best works. Uh, right now, Treasury has two types of venture capital available, what they call direct investing or fund of funds. Again, that's very broad. Those are broad terms. We can really sculpt that to be very specific if we wanted to. We want to put some terms in there that are going to target certain markets, target certain businesses, target certain type of investments. Again, leverage, job creation, socially, economically disadvantaged, all of those hurdles that we need to hit when we stand up venture capital, we need to keep in mind. So I'll pause there and see if there are any questions. If not, we can go to the next slide. We had one question come in. Have you received input yet from Florida Bankers Association or other lending groups indicating the type of support that would make more sense to shape Florida's policy? Uh, we have talked to the Florida Bankers Association. Uh, we have not talked to them uh, specifics, uh, but we will. We intend on reaching out to many of our partners. Uh, you know, there are plenty of them out there. These are the folks that we want to talk to, but we have not had specific conversations with Florida backers. Yeah, I just wanted to mention um, we, we had a, we had a call with Treasury last week. Um, so the legislation passed in March. We've kind of um, been waiting on additional guidance so we can really have meaningful conversations on how we can frame these programs. And again, this is just how uh, the fund of funds or direct investment would work in the venture capital uh, cycle under SSBCI. So I don't know how many people are familiar with venture capital, but uh, I don't want to focus too much on this. I don't want to take up too much time. I'd rather leave some time for Q&A at the end. Uh, but if anybody who is in, on the call with venture capital, if you want to know more specifics, if you want to uh, have a call offline, send an email, we're happy to talk about it. Some key points on venture capital. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, those of you who live in South Florida, those of you who might be on the call from the Miami, Miami area, um, I'm sure you see all the new construction, all the new businesses, all the new financial firms moving to Florida. Again, this is great for Florida. This is great for Florida businesses. And I think this is an extremely important piece of SSBCI being venture capital. But again, it has to be operationalized correctly. 
Uh, so that I think sums up our presentation. Uh, this is our website. I think Tina also put this link in our chat. Um, there's plenty of other links in the chat. I think we should also talk about the survey that we have on our website as well, if you want to mention that. Right, so again, um, we uh, are, are waiting on a lot of information from Treasury, right, on how we can not only apply what the new guidance is, wait, we're waiting on certain definitions. All of these things are going to be new information to us whenever Treasury lets us know what they are. But we need to know kind of what the situation is in your community, to the businesses you are touching, to the organizations that you operate. This is a, a survey that we put together to find out not only types of financing that is needed out there, but the types of training and assistance that is needed. So um, if you could, it's a it's a 10 minute survey. You're going to answer you know, 12 or 13 questions and it's going to be very valuable for us, not only as we um, again wait for the Treasury guidance and design these programs, but as we continue to have additional workshops and meetings about what does capital access mean exactly, right? We give you a very high level overview of it, but we intend on breaking these out and being granular and specific and really getting into the needs and means of what these programs are. And uh, starting with that survey would be a big help for us. Tina, it's in the link, correct? Yes, the survey link was provided in the chat and you can also find it um, on our website. And feel free to share it as well. Any other questions? We had a question come in. Are there requirements from Treasury and SSBCI 2.0 to allocate certain portion of funding to CDFAs or other small lenders? I don't think they've specified about direct. Uh, I know that's been under PPP and some other Treasury funding that they've allocated directly to CDFIs. I don't know whether they've done that under SSBCI 2.0. Uh, so there's not a directive per se from Treasury. However, CDFIs and community banks and mission driven lenders are really at the heart of SSBCI, right? They reach the communities, they reach the small businesses and populations that we need. Whether or not it's specific in Treasury guidance or not, we intend on reaching out and working with CDFIs to find, you know, kind of those, those markets. There's also uh, what's classified as MDIs, Minority Depository Institutions, um, and I think there's there's only a handful, I believe, maybe a total of eight, twenty something. Uh, eight MDIs and thirteen or fourteen CDFIs, I think that we have. Right. So uh, whether you're a bank, or whether you're you're a um, credit union, so the it's a small group of lenders that we probably will talk to as a group to to, to potentially allocate certain monies to the CDFIs for. Uh, so the MDIs for specific allocations. So it's not another question, Treasury. Uh, I have not seen anything in Treasury guidelines, but again, that falls back on the socially and economically disadvantaged um, monies that we should target. So stay tuned. Um, Greg raised his hand. I think he has a question. Greg, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Sorry, I was going to try to put this in the chat, but I really didn't know how to say it and make it make sense. So. Um, we talked about the 320. Well, first of all, Mike, and, and I really appreciate you having this webinar and, and you know, being transparent about the process and and, and what you're thinking. Um, it, it helps us think a lot here at the SPDC of what we might be able to put towards the program. But the 324 million that you, you discussed, that's the phase one, but you're, you're breaking that up into three phases of about 108 million, right? Correct. And then the timeline we're not sure of yet, but you have to have 80% out the door. Um, so the timeline is, I don't know, at least out to 2023 or whatever that that milestone chart said, or you're thinking it might be. Um, mm -hmm. But to get the money out the door fast, have you thought about maybe like a line of credit interest only type style of thing to get it out and get it revolved back in and get it back out? Back. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. sorry. Thanks, Greg. Uh, that kind of goes back to the question that David asked earlier about what does deploying mean, right? So having a hundred thousand dollar line of credit um, might be on paper a hundred thousand dollars, but to Treasury, if it's only ten thousand or whatever in that line it's of credit, been too. right? It, it it could potentially affect um, some of some of our uh, goals, right? So 
Line, lines of credit are available as an option under SSBCI. Um, we have a, a wide range of uh, different types of uh, business purposes that it could be used for. So really, um, lines of credit or interest only or other types of products like that are open and available as long as they can help us meet our overall goals. I think if we wait for Treasury guidelines, Greg, and, and if, we, if we can ask that question to Treasury, I'm sure whether if we provide a line of credit, if that if that line of credit is encumbered, is that going to be considered deployed? Uh, and I think if the answer is yes, then I'm open to having that conversation on how we can use lines of credit. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for the question. Um, we had a question from Sandra. She's not familiar with SSBCI 1.0. How will the funds flow to the businesses that need it? That's, that's a good question. Um, I encourage you to go back and read the legislation on 1.0. I think it'd be helpful to educate uh, you and your, your borrowers, uh, your lenders. I'm not sure who you're with, but uh, uh, the money will, will flow directly to them. We, we have an incredible system set up here. Um, we're, we're going to be able to directly and uh, um, directly fund those businesses. That's how we do it. Uh, of course, it would be pretty standard when you're talking about closing documents. Uh, review, due diligence. We do it now in our other programs, so it will be a pretty standard process uh, and it will flow directly to the business. Our intention is not to provide lenders with a tranche of money, not to provide a lender to say, here's $50 million. That's not what Treasury wants, and I think that's going to be uh, very difficult for us to track and report on when we do that. So we're going to be doing it directly to the borrowers. Um, it, it, I'm happy to have a conversation to sort of operationalize what we feel is going to be the best way to set this up soon. We had uh, David Rodriguez raise his hand. David, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Good morning. Uh, Good morning, David. This for... is your third question, so I'm going to cut you off after three days. Yeah, yeah, this is my last one, so, one. so I am going to. I'm going to squeeze two. Um, wanted to know if in this iteration of the program, if the leverage required is going to be again at the 10 to 1, if that if that is aspirational at the end of the program, or if each transaction would have to hit the 10 to 1 in order to be eligible, and if concurrent financing is going to count towards that leverage, because in the past, if there was one small like line of credit being supported with SSBCI and there was other financing, concurrent financing happening at the same time, a, a fix or an SBA loan or a 504 or, or something else happening at the same time with the financing package, all that lending counted towards hmm. the leverage. So Good how question. is it going to work this time? Yeah, let me take your latter question first. So uh, I'm going to fight for that. I believe that that absolutely is considered leverage if it's a concurrent, and we do it right now with EDA. I believe we go back uh, 12 months, I think, on the even 12-month funding to consider that part of the the project. So we're going to fight for that. Uh, I don't find any indications from Treasury um, that that will not be the case. I believe it should be. I've had other conversations about, well, what if a business usual, utilizes that same guarantee multiple times? Will that be considered? And, and my answer is yes. And again, if Treasury says, well, we're not sure if they're not giving us guidelines, I'm going to consider it uh, as leverage. I think it's important to do that, and I think it's important to get to our 10 to 1 leverage. So yes, 10 to 1 is. Did I answer the, that question for you, David? That second question? Yes, you did. Good. So the 10 to 1 is going to be um, the same. It, that is the, the requirement on the portfolio. Every loan needs to be 1 to 1, uh, but the portfolio needs to be 10 to 1. It is aspirational. My goal is to hit it. I want to look at it as a hard number because the closer we are to that number, especially on the first draw, is going to give us performance potential allocation, in, uh, additional allocation. I don't want to look at it as aspirational. I think it's doable. I think there's so much money out there that other borrowers should be should be right next to us on this. This is not lender of last resort. I think this is lender of participation. I think it could work for both parties. If we do it correctly and we find the right partners, I think we could really blow out that 10 to 1 number. I don't think it's it's unattainable. Yeah, and I Thank just you. wanted to yeah, Thank you, David. And I just wanted to make the quick comment. You know, we're we're talking about 10 to 1 um, and leverage ratios, but in um, additional workshops, we'll go through exactly how we 
not only calculate that uh, leverage ratio, but how each program is uh, vastly different on how uh, leverage uh, is achieved. Right. And again, of course, the more we can do, as you were talking about, David, in, in sort of revolving this, and the more we can do, the quicker we can deploy and redeploy, that'll help as well. Um, you know, a lot of numbers, if we can get those numbers up, get that 10 to 1, uh, blow that out of the water and, and really increase that, we, we will be open to a lot of additional funding where it won't be a question of whether we've done well or not. So my goal, I've said this many times, I want to be first back to the trough for our second draw. I want to be number one in our numbers, and I think it's possible. We've got some great businesses here in Florida. We've got some some tremendous number of businesses moving to Florida, moving from other states. So I don't see any reason why we can't. I'll be disappointed if we can't be the first back. Any other questions? I don't see any other questions in the chat. If you have a question, I would encourage you to raise your hand or speak up. And if you think of one, you can always send us an email at ssbci at deo.myporta.com. That's available on our website, portajobs.org slash ssbci. And that is also where you can access that survey. Please take the survey and send it to any interested parties. Again, the email is? ssbci at deo.myporta.com. And that that email address was provided in the chat along with um, several links to the different resources that were mentioned. So uh, take note of those and, and if anything comes up, if you have any questions, you'll know where to reach us. Thank you everybody for joining. I look forward to our next one. If any of you would like to have uh, another one of these potentially with your investors, uh, a group of investors, uh, please let us know. We're, we're happy to do others. I think this is incredibly helpful. I'm not sure how much of this happened over uh, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago during 1.0, but uh, I want to continue to do this. I think it helps everybody. It helps the businesses. It helps the lenders out there, and it certainly helps us. Uh, it can be a game changer for a lot of businesses here in the state of Florida. So uh, it's been great uh, doing this. It's been great talking to you all, and, and hopefully we'll do this again soon. Just turn it.